what are EMG and DP? Sometimes you can face two such terms as electromyography or nerve conduction study, NCS, or neurography, NG, or evoked potentials, EP. All these techniques are about recording the electrical signals from our neuromuscular system, including central system, spinal cord, and brain. Unfortunately, today we do not have enough time to show you evoked potentials, but tomorrow will be audiology day and our specialists will show you how to record auditory evoked potentials. And all evoked potentials are the same, only stimulus modality is different and some other parameters. Let's talk about such a paradigm from thought to movement, motor pathway. As you know, our brain contains a lot of small cells, neurons, that are connected between each, each other with a small links. And small electrical currents uh, flow from seal to seal, they are chaotic. But if you have some thought that I would like to move a limb, they become arranged. And electrical signal goes from brain through the spinal cord, through the peripheral nerve to the muscle, muscle contracts, and we can see a movement. On each stage of this signal transferring, it is electricity electrical signal that can be measured and explored. Here it is small ellipse with AMG electromyography and NCS nerve conduction study titles. So with these techniques, it is possible to examine muscle and peripheral nerve and a little bit of a spinal cord and motor nerve. And here it is big ellipse with TMS transcranial magnetic stimulation. With such techniques, it's possible to examine full motor pathway from the brain to the muscle. But EMG techniques can give us more specific information. Another paradigm, from impact to sensation, sensory pathway, it is backward pathway. Our skin contains a lot of small receptors. When you impact these receptors with the some mechanical impact or temperature and so on, they produce small electrical signals. These signals can go through the peripheral nerve to the spinal cord, then to the brain. And in the brain, we can recognize them as sensation. And on all stages as previously, it is electrical signal transferring. Here it is small ellipse with NCS nerve conduction study and NG neurography titles. With these techniques, it's possible to examine a receptor and peripheral nerve. And here it is big ellipse with EP evoked potentials. With such techniques, it's possible to examine full sensory pathway. But as previously, EMG techniques can give us more specific information. Now a bit of anatomy. Here it is a slice of a spinal cord. Here signal comes from the brain, from the upper motor neuron here to the lower motor neuron. And then signal can uh, go through the motor neuron fibers, motor neuron fibers to the muscle and can activate the muscle. On the other way, here it is sensory receptors in skin. Signal from these sensory receptors go through the sensory nerve fibers to the spinal cord and then can go up to the brain. For us, it is very important to understand such a basic term as motor unit. Here it is a muscle and it slice, and in the slice of the muscle, we can see a lot of muscle fibers. Normally, there are a few thousand muscle fibers in one muscle. And here it is a slice of a spinal cord. Here it is motor neuron. And um, one of the axons of the motor neuron goes through the full length of the nerve to the muscle. Here it's split into the branches and uh, uh, terminals via synapses connected are connected to muscle fibers. 
So, Morton Euro, its axon and all muscle fibers that are connected to this axon represents motor unit. Normally, each muscle contains near a few hundreds of uh, motor units. Motor unit work on the principle all or nothing. It means that if the signal on the input of the motor neuron that comes from the brain is lower than some threshold, this motor neuron doesn't excite and excitation doesn't go to the muscle fibers and muscle fibers uh, don't contract. But if the signal on the input of this motor neuron that comes from the brain will exceed some threshold, motor ne uh, neuron uh, can be excited. This excitation will go through the motor nerve to the muscle fibers and all muscle fibers that are connected to this um, fiber will be activated. They will be contracted synchronously. And each time the response of this motor unit will be the same. So uh, all or nothing. Very important technique in MG it is motor velocity. It is uh, the velocity of the nerve uh, impulse that come from the spinal cord to the muscle on this stage from the spinal cord to the muscle. For example, if we ask a patient to contract a muscle and if you put some electrodes on the muscle and record the signal of the muscle, we will see some pattern, some chaotic signal. Because in this situation, our brain send uh, activating signals to the motor units, to the different motor units with some frequency and all motor units uh, will be activated uh, with some rate. Uh, the signal will be summarized and it will be a very chaotic pattern. And in this situation, it is not possible to understand what is real motor velocity. But if we place electrical stimulator on the skin in the projection of the nerve, and if we apply here uh, some electrical stimulus, it is painful, but electrical current will go through the uh, skin to the nerve. It excites nerves, nerve, and the signal through the nerve will go to the muscle and muscle will be contracted. We cheat muscle. It doesn't know from where the signal come, from brain or from uh, electrical stimulator, signal come, comes and muscle contracts. And if in this situation, we put electrodes on the muscle and record a signal, we can see such a picture. Here it is a time on the horizontal axis, but and on the vertical axis, it is voltage. At zero time, we apply stimulus here, and with some delay, we can see a response. It is compound muscle action potential, CMAP or M wave, and it appears at the beginning of the muscle contraction. Why we can see here some delay of the signal? between stimulus and the signal beginning, signal onset. Because for the signal, it's necessary to go through the nerve uh, this distance from the stimulation side to recording side. So such a delay. Doctors name it latency. And if we put electrical stimulator on the other side, uh, on the other place of the same nerve or the wrist and apply electrical stimulus, we can get some another response. It will be the same shape of the response, but uh, this response will appear later than first one. Why it is later? Because for the signal, it's necessary to go some additional distance between second and first uh, stimulation sites. We can measure this distance with a ruler, and also we can calculate the difference of these latencies. It will be time. And if we divide this distance by the time, we will get velocity. Here you can see this velocity. You can see that it is not very big, only a few dozens of meters per second, but for human being, it is enough. With the same technique, it's possible to 
uh, record sensory velocity. It is a velocity uh, from the signal that goes through sensory nerve fibers from the skin to the spinal cord. But in this situation, it's necessary to place electrodes not on the muscle, but on the nerve terminals, on the nerve ends. Another very interesting technique and useful technique, F-wave. Let's return to the anatomy. And now you know that if you apply electrical stimulus here on the motor fibers of the nerve, excitation will go to the muscle and muscle will be contracted. But at the same time, at the same time in this situation, signal goes up to the spinal cord, to the motor neuron. And sometimes this motor neuron can be excited and send signal back to the muscle. And we can record this late response. It will be F wave. You can see it here in the picture. Here we apply few stimuli. All stimuli are the same. You can see here the superposition of these traces and first response. CMAP responses are the same, but second responses F wave are different because F wave is not stable. Another technique, needle MG. Here we use special uh, electrode. It is a needle. This needle looks like a needle from syringe, but instead of the hole, instead of the tube instead uh, inside the cannula, we can see here a core, it is electrical wire. And so we can, we have here uh, two electrodes. One is cannula, first is cannula, second is core. And between them, it is some electrical isolation. So we can record a signal between these two electrodes. And if we put this needle into the muscle, it's also painful. But if we put it into the muscle and ask a patient to make a small contraction of the muscle, our brain will send uh, some activating signals to the motor units. They will be activated one by one with some rate. And uh, we can record here the signal in small area of the end of the needle, and it will be motor action potential. It has such a shape, motor action potential, motor action potential of the single motor units. And how it will be visible in the screen. 